prayer day. The word of the most high God says if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray seek my face turn from their wicked ways that I would heal the land and hear from heaven. I don't know about anybody else but he taught us how to pray. Our father which art in heaven how will thou be thy name? Thou kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our necessary portion. Come on now and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. And bless your name. The word of God says men ought to always pray. Y'all better come on and go with me on National Prayer Day. Men ought to always pray and not faint. This kind comes by fasting and praying. He said don't be anxious for nothing, but all things in prayer and supplication, making your petition known before the King of kings and Lord of lords, because prayer is a legal petition. You better know right now, sometimes you got to push. I was told push means to pray. Until something happens. Hallelujah. And bless your name. I don't know about anybody else. But the word of God says. The effectual fervent prayers. Of a righteous man. Avail as much. Come on now. It ain't time to faint. Because we know right now. That the most high God. Has given us prayer. As a legal petition. What you say. The most high God. Has given us prayer as a legal petition. Oh, I can't faint. I'm in a season of counting up the armor. I can't faint because I'm in a season that the most high God has us in the wilderness. And right now, the United States of America has said today is National Prayer Day. Oh, you should have known 5 a.m. prayer was going to show up. For National Prayer Day. Because I was birthed out of prayer. Hallelujah. And bless your name. And when you take prayer. And light it up with the word of the most high God. We have to know right now. That we can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens us. Oh we're more than overcomers. More than conquerors. I don't care what we're faced with. What's going on in our life. If we were just. Humble ourselves, oh Lord, and pray. Come on now. You got to know right now that everything you do in communion with the Most High God, you do it by prayer. And when Yeshua prayed, oh, he went off by himself and began to pray. So I'm thankful right now that 5 a.m. prayer came to teach you how to pray. What you say? Because the disciples said to the Most High God, teach us how to pray. And a lot of times our prayers are not being answered because we're not in alignment uh -oh, with the Most High God. See, we serve a Most High God of order. And therefore, we have to know in the book of Proverbs, it says, if you do not agree with the law, that your prayers will not be answered. Oh, you don't think that's true? Throw up the scriptures. That your prayers is an abomination to the most high God. If you have thrown out the law, the Torah, the most high God's teachings and instructions. I've only come to stand on the word of the most high God. Line upon line, precept upon precept. All I can give you is the word of God. 
or a national prayer day. Y'all want to come on and pray with me? The word says, oh Lord, one can chase a thousand. Come on and start praying right now. Because I feel the Holy Ghost moving up in here. But two can put 10,000 to flight. He said, if two or three gather together in my name, come on now, that he would be in the midst. He said, if two touch, come on and agree with me, Zenobia. If two touch and agree on anything, it shall be done. So I come to pray. For you tonight. I don't know what kind of illness you got going on. But I pray for healing. In your body. Hallelujah and bless your name. I don't know what financial attacks. That you're going through right now. But I know I serve the most high God. And he shall supply. All your needs. According to his riches and glory. I don't know what you're going through right now. You might want to faint. But the most high God's word says. Oh, come on now. Don't you get weary. Come on, prayer. And well doing. Because you're going to reap this harvest if you faint not. You better know prayer is a legal petition. So come on. Let's petition the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And guess what? He said in unity is where you command the blessing. So if we all get on one accord, if my people... Wait a minute now, are you his people? That's a question. If my people who are called by my name, come on now, I shall be your God and you shall be my people. Come on, Israel, wake up. I shall be your God and you shall be my people. Come on now, prayer is a legal petition. Do you even know what petition mean? You might want to look up the definition of petition. Prayer is a legal petition. Hallelujah. And bless your name. And right now, for National Prayer Day, the world is standing on John chapter 13. Love one another. What you say, most I got? Oh, you know that's my commandment, Dr. J. <laughs> Love the Lord your God. With all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And love your neighbor as yourself. So we're standing on the commandments of the Most High God. Oh, we just came out of Passover. Come on now, Most High God. Set it up through John chapter 13. We just came out of Passover. And the most high commandment says, love the Lord your God. Oh, I'm sorry. All the commandments hang on this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And love your neighbor <laughs> as yourself. Hallelujah. On day what? What day are we on? 13. Oh, the sun about to set. Day 13 of counting the Omer. Come on now. You already know that the most high God right now is intervening on behalf of man. Because right now we are petitioning the kingdom of the most high God. Thou kingdom come, oh Lord, thou will be done on earth. As it is in heaven. Y'all start sharing this video right now. Because we're going to give you understanding of how to pray. Yeah. The word says, through all your getting, get an understanding. Yeah. And we're going to teach you how. Oh, come on, Talmudines. We're going to teach you how to pray. Oh, Lord. The disciples said, oh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, teach us how yeah. Yeah. to pray. Oh, Lord, I just want the kingdom to come. I don't know about anybody else, but I just want the kingdom to come. Thou kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Bless your name on National Prayer Day. If my people who are called by my name, come on, Israel. If my people who are called by my name. Would humble 
humble themselves and pray. Israel is praying tonight. Hallelujah and bless your name. I will heal the land and hear from heaven. Come on, mother. Come on, mother. I don't know about you, mother, but he shall supply all your needs, mother. According to his riches and glory. You want to know why mother? Because you are the daughter of the commandments. And he will never leave you. Nor forsake you. You want to know why mother? Because you seek him first. The kingdom of the most high God. And all his righteousness. Knowing that all things shall be added unto you mother. And you shall not. Go empty. Hallelujah. The most high God wants to speak to you, mother, and tell you right now, Sarah, I'm going to make you laugh. What you say, most high? He said, Sarah, I'm going to make you laugh. Because what the enemy meant for bad, I'm going to mean for good. Because when the enemy comes in like a flood, mother, my God shall raise up a standard against him. Come on now, mother. I need you to know right now that the most high God has not forgotten about you. You are the daughter of the commandments. You've been mixed for what you say? I'm talking about washed in the water of his word. He ain't bring you this far, mother, to leave you. Mother, you know you used to sing a song. It said, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Come on, mother, Sankey. He ain't brought you this far to leave you. And I'm standing in the gap. I'm going to make up the hedge, mother. Don't you get weary and well doing. You're going to reap this harvest if you faint not. Come on, Sarah. Start laughing because I'm going to laugh with you. Come on, Sarah. Start laughing. Hold on to the most high God's unchanging hand. Oh, Lord. Come on, Michael, and war for my mother. Come on, Michael, and war for my mother. Hallelujah and bless your name. Oh, one can chase a thousand, mother. See, you've been chasing this thing by yourself, but two can put 10,000 to flight. And now your daughter, what you say? Oh, the enemy don't even know. Oh, I've been praying, mother. I've been watching and pray. Because men ought to always pray and not faint. Don't you faint, girl. Don't you faint, mother. We got this. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Come on, come on, come on in here, Adrian. We are about to talk about prayer. On National Prayer Day. So we got to come into understanding of how to pray. Because so many times we thought we were praying, but we really didn't know how to pray. So the most high God is not only teaching us how to number our days. Oh, he going to make this one count. I'm making it count, Dr. J. Hallelujah. On National Prayer Day. Oh, my sheep know my voice. <laughs> and another they will not follow. Oh, I'm, I, I, I'm making an appearance at, on National Prayer Day. On day 12 of counting the omer. I'm going to make it count. Yes, yes. Hold on. He didn't give us a spirit of fear, mother, but power and love and a sound mind. He say to you right now, mother, peace be still. Peace be still. Oh, Lord. Peace be still. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Come on, mother. He's in control. He's been in control all these years. Do you think he's surprised by what's going on? He ain't surprised. And it's going to work out for your good. Because all things work together. For them who love the Lord, mother. And that are called. Oh, come on, Sarah. Sankey. You know he's saying, Sarah, come on and laugh. And that are called. 
according to his purpose. <laughs> oh, it's the most high's purpose that will prevail. Woo, most high. On National Prayer Day, I lift up this United States of America. And I serve warning to the government. Because there's a government that's rising up now. It's called the kingdom of heaven. The most high God government is standing up now. So we all need to shoot and turn back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We need to yield to his will. Thou kingdom come. Come on, most high God. Thou will be done. Yes, yes. On earth as it is in heaven. You have given us an unshakable kingdom. Well, I'm faithful on this evening. I'm faithful on the sixth day. That the most high God has come with revelation on how to pray. Decrease me right now, most high God, as you give the increase. Woo, help me to articulate my words this evening. Help me right now, Holy Ghost, by leading and guiding me into all truth. Because we shall know the truth. And the truth. Shall make us free. And I will forever give you all the glory. All the honor. And all the praise. And it's in the mighty mighty name. Of Yeshua. Hamashiach I pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Most high God. First of all, we need to understand that there are 12, and 12 is the number of government. There are 12 action steps to prayer principles. Come on now. Y'all better get your notebooks and pen, and y'all better take notes, because guess what? We are in class. We teach, we don't preach. Come on now. <coughs> Excuse me. Teach means to train and instruct. Preach means to proclaim. So what I need you to do right now is go get your notebook and go get your pen and begin to take some notes. Twelve actions, steps to prayer principles. I'm talking about kingdom principles for kingdom living because it's all about a king and a kingdom. So number one, make Supplication. Come on, Holy Ghost. As the Most High shows you what He desires, wholeheartedly agree with Him in prayer to fulfill His will. Uh oh. To fulfill whose will? His will. Number two, specify petitions and requests. When you ask the Almighty One, to do something for you. Bring evidence reverent to the case. In the form of his word and through Pacific intentional communication. Come on now. When you go to court, you go to court at 9, 12, and 3. So you want to bring some evidence, some case law to what's going on in your life. Hallelujah. Number three, plead the case. What you say? Plead the case. Don't beg or moan before the most high. But pray intelligently because you rightfully deserve the answer based on what? His promises. Number four, give thanks. Come on, mother. Bless him right now. Give thanks. Offer sacrifices of praise to him with a free heart for all that he has already done for you. It's already done. Number five, secure the promises. When you petition the most high 
Take his word, his promises before him. Apply them to the specific requests you are making. Then hold on to God's promises. All his principles are his promises. Number six, they said it again. Oh, we're going to establish this thing. Give thanks. Thank him for what you don't yet see because you believe it's already done. What you say? Give thanks. Thank him for what you don't see yet because you believe it is already done. Number seven, become silent. Be still. Gather yourself. When the spirit, mind, and body, and emotions are separated, you will be unable to pray God's will with singleness of purpose. Silence helps bring you into unity with the most high. Number eight, believe. Believe right at the time you are asking that you have the answer to your request and you will receive it. Number nine, live in expectation. Come on now. Live in expectation. Anticipate the answers to your prayers by preparing a way for them. I know that's right. I'm making room because he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we don't have room to receive. Number 10, give adoration. Worship the most high. For who he is, the king of all the earth, your creator, your savior, your all in all. Number 11, make confession. Agree with the most high God about what he says about you. Don't dwell on the past sins, but obey. The almighty most high God immediately when he shows you that you are wrong. Number 12, practice active belief. Oh, I love this one. Number 12, practice active belief. Don't stop after you have prayed. Get up and look for what you asked for. What you say? Don't stop after you have prayed. Get up. And look for what you have asked for. If you seek and not, it will come to pass. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Twelve action steps to principle prayer. Hallelujah. The word says, if two or three gather together in his name, that he would be in the midst. Oh, Lord, I know he here. And if two touch and agree on anything. It shall be done. And I know I can't do nothing this evening on the sixth day without this word being established through the law, the prophets, and the writings. So the method style of study is a process of studying the word of Ahia, Asha, Ahia, which is I am. That I am in Hebrew, the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we seek his guidance and live in a kingdom lifestyle. The Torah, God's teachings and instructions and 613 principles. As well, the creator speaks, mother. And then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophets, the Nevi'ims, and the books of the writings, the Ketavim's. Collectively, the Torah, the Nevi'ims, and the Ketavim's are identified as the Tanakh, or as some refer to it, the Old Testament, which is the only book that Yeshua studied and referenced throughout the New Testament. Psalms chapter 77 verse 12. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. 
meditate. Tonight, we look to the word meditate. Hebrews 7, 8, 7, 8. Study, ponder, to talk, speak, to meditate, consider, put forth thoughts. The Torah testifies. The prophets proclaim. The writings bear witness. I will meditate. Psalms chapter 119 verse 15. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. Psalms chapter 119 verse 23. Princes also did sit and speak against me. But thou servant did meditate in thou statutes. Oh, come on, Psalms 119, counting the Omer. We have completed the method style of study this evening, reviewing meditate. First, we recognize the standard set in the Torah and 613 principles. Then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophets, the Nevi'ins, and the books of the writings, the Ketavins. Collectively, the Torah, the Nevi'ins, and the Ketavins or identify as the Tanakh, or as some refer to it, the Old Testament. But it's the only book that Yeshua studied and referenced throughout the New Testament. 5 a.m. prayer. What is it that the Most High is speaking to you? His ambassador here upon the earth. Psalms chapter 119 verse 148. My eyes prevent the night watches. Oh Lord. That I might meditate in thy word. Shalom Alakim. Peace be unto you 5 a.m. prayer community. If our study and our thoughts are his word, what is it that should constantly or be on our tongues? What did the king send you here to speak and meditate on? Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. And bless your name. So now, are you ready? Yes, most high God. For the word of God. The father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. Are you ready for the word of God? The father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. I'm going to need something to drink. This evening, we are coming out of the book of John. John chapter 13 in its entirety. Again, this evening, on day six, of counting the Omer, of day 13, we are coming out of the book of John 13 in its entirety on the National Prayer Day. Now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come. That he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into his heart of Judas Ishakar, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God, he rises from supper and lay aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the tower wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he, Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, does thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said 
unto him, Thou shall never wash my feet. Yeshua answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast not part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He that washes need not save to wash his feet. But is clean every week. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet. And had taken his garments. And was set down again. He said unto them. Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me master and Lord. And ye say, well, for I so, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come, that when it comes to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in heart and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask, who is it should be of whom he spake? He then lying on Jesus' breath, breast said unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, he, he it is to whom I shall give a song. When I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop. He gave it to Judas Ishakar. The son of Simon. And after the sop. Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus. Unto him. That thou does it. Do quickly. No man. Ooh, now no man at the table. Knew for what intent he spake. This unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the salt, went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while, I am with you. Ye shall seek me. And as I said unto the Jews, whether I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another 
as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. And that's what they're standing on for the day of national prayer. A new covenant, thank you, I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my Tamadine's disciples, if ye have loved one to another. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whether goest thou? Jesus answered him, whether I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why can I not? Why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thou sake. What you say, Peter? Jesus answered him, Will thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow. Till thou hast denied me thrice. Oh, Lord. May the most I got add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. Teach us how to pray. The greatest commandment of all is this. Love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your heart, and with all your might. And love your neighbor as yourself. Ooh, y'all done set this National Day of Prayer up. That's what I'm talking about. This is a timely revelation from heaven about you. Uh-oh. What you say? Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. This is a timely revelation from heaven about you. If you grasp this, you are on your way to victory after victory. In this powerful, timely, detail, exceptional, revolutionary teaching, Dr. Miles Monroe, Painstakingly explain why the Most High needs you to come into a holy communion partnership with Him. This is why the Most High needs you to pray. What you say? This is why the Most High needs you to pray. Prayer. Is holy communion partnership with the Most High, the Almighty. If you grasp this message, you will change. Your prayer life will change. Your whole life and perspective will also change. Your problems and challenging situations will soon become a thing of the past. Testimonies. Come on, most high God. Hallelujah. Prepare yourself. You are about to be blessed, delivered, and totally edified through the power of the hidden truth in this most timely word from the throne of grace. Understanding the purpose of prayer and fasting in the kingdom, I want to talk to you about prayer. The most misunderstood activity in the church is prayer. What you say? The most misunderstood activity in the church is prayer. Most people who pray don't know how to pray. You better say that again. Most pre people who pray don't know how to pray. Okay. I used to be among them. You better say it. I used to be among them. Prayer is the most important kingdom principle on earth. That's a paradox meaning. 
A statement that seems absurd, but in reality is the truth. It is the most misunderstood, but it's also the most important. What you say? It is the most misunderstood, but it's also the most important. Because prayer is an ambassador, yours and mine, number one responsibility. I will explain this to you. There is a statement made by John Wesley, which I think it's an important statement. I believe that John Wesley understood something about prayer that few people understand. When I understood it, my entire life changed. You better come on, Holy Ghost. Here's what he says. He says, it seems that without the Most High, man cannot. And without man, the Most High will not. Uh-oh. What you say? See, when I understood it, my entire life changed. Here's what he says. He says, it seems that without the Most High, man cannot. And without man, the Most High will not. What did he mean by that? Because it's, very, it's a very important statement. Without the Most High, man cannot. And without man, the most high will not. What he means is, what he means is this. It seems that on earth, in this world, man can do nothing without the most high. But there is also another reality, and that is the most high will do nothing on earth. In this world without man. What you say? The principle is there has to be a partnership. Ooh, Lord. Joint interest, participation, acts of taking part, cooperation, responsiveness, union, association, communion, accord equals close relationship equals closeness because prayer is spiritual communion holy spiritual conversation equals deep spiritual fellowship equals deep spiritual intimacy equals intercommunication equals divine spiritual understanding Friendship equals love, equals compatibility, equals devotion, equals loyalty. You better come out between heaven and earth in order for things to happen here on earth. So what happens on earth depends on you. And that is literally true. I'm going to say it again. So what happens on earth? Depends on you. And that is literally true. If you are rebellious, refusing his rules over your life, come on, most high God, nothing godly will work for you. The most high can use you wanting to do things your own way. No dice. The most high can use you. Prayer. It's holy spiritual communion. Enter conversation. To understand prayer then, here is my simple definition of prayer. And it took me about 35 years to write this one sentence. Prayer is earthly license for heavenly interference. What you say? Prayer is earthly license for heavenly interference. What does this mean? Prayer is not an option for the believer. Prayer is a necessity. I want to repeat. Prayer is not a religious activity. 
done without the most high spirit. Prayer is a legal activity. Legal equals appointed, established, authorized by the most high. But you cannot understand this unless you understand the kingdom's concept. Concept is a principle equals the accepted rule regarding this divine fundamental truth, action or conduct, a fundamental truth, rule, and method of application and action submissiveness like a lamb faceless nameless meekness oh lord let's take this a step further i call this the power of the man what you say let's take this a step further i call this the power of the man the most creature on earth is you, the human. Yeshua, the human, the purified body of Yeshua, the human you consecrated. Oh, Lord. How did this become like this? First of all, the most high only gave legal authority on earth to humans. Authority means the power to determine, uh, adjudicate, or otherwise settle issues or disputes, jurisdiction, the right to control, command, or determine, adjudicate, to pronounce or decree his will, jurisdiction, the right, power, or authority to administer justice by hearing and determine controversies, prolonged disputes, contentions, arguments, strife, arguments. By his promptings, come on now, most high, Regarding the most high's legal authority given to humans. Question. What is a human? What I am about to explain to you will probably be the most important discovery of your life. And it's this. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. Say it. I am a spirit. It's important that you know and understand this. You don't have one. You are a spirit. But you live in a dirt body. The most high carve your body from the dust. So your physical body is 100% dirt. This is why when you leave your physical body, we dump you or dump it back into the dirt. Now, whether your dirt body is dark or white or yellow or red or brown, it's nothing but dirt. So don't ever measure your worth by your dirt. What you say? So don't ever measure your worth by your dirt. A human is a spirit being living in a dirt body. Let me explain how this works. The word humus is the word for dirt. Say it again. The word humus is the word for dirt. Humus is dirt. But Man is different. Man is the spirit being. The Hebrew word for man is the word ish. So in the book of Genesis, when the Most High said, let us make man, he used the word ish. I-S-H. Let us create ish. That's the spirit being. 
ish. Man is the spirit being. So you are a spirit. Man is a spirit. You are man, a spirit, but your body, physical body, is humus. Dirt. Then the Most High took the man, you his son or daughter, and put him in the dirt, the humus. So you then became known as a humus man. We don't write it with two words, but it's two words put together. It is humus man. They drop the middle syllable and they simply call it human. Oh, we teaching tonight. Are you with me? Come on, don't y'all get lost. Are you with me? Say it. I am a human. What is a human? A human is a divine mystery. What you say? A human is a divine mystery. A mystery is any truth that is not known except by divine revelation. What you say? A mystery is any truth that is not known except by divine revelation. A human is a spirit being in a dirt body. You are a humus man called a human. When you use the term human, it's not a simple term. It means a human, a spirit in a dirt body. Are you still with me? Because all of this is important. For you to understand the meaning and operation of prayer. Ooh, come on now. Are you still with me? Because all of this is important for you. To understand the meaning and operation of prayer. So when the Most High created the human race, he put the spirit being man inside a dirt body. Then the Most High said to the human, have dominion over the earth. What you say? Then the Most High said to the human, have dominion over the earth. Dominion means power or right of governing and controlling, sovereign authority, legal license, him licensing us, sanctified, purified in him, Hamashiach to govern for him. Governing means to rule by right, sovereign authority to exercise, directing, or restraining influence over, to hold in check, control, to govern one's temper, the breast, self control. First, bring your body under control first. What you say? Self-control. First bring your dirt body under control first. All of your sensitivities, egos, anger, self-righteousness, hatred, greed, self-worth, lust, vanities, etc. Under the rule of his word. His laws and his commandments first. Yeah. Governing means authoritative, determining, directing, overseeing, supervisory. Governing means supreme authority. Yeah. Supreme means highest in rank, paramount, sovereign, unsurpassable. Final authority is power. To determine, adjudicate, pronounce, and decree, or otherwise settle issues or disputes. Jurisdiction, the right, power, or authority to administer justice by hearing and determining controversies, the right to control, command, or determine equals decision. 
decision making. Remembering Yeshua said, I only do what I hear and see my father doing. Let them have dominion over the earth. Cosmo world, universe, the whole thing. Y'all better come on. It's National Prayer Day. And we don't know how to pray. Let them have dominion. Them who? A humans. This is a spirit in a dirt body. So a human is the only being that has a legal, you better come on, rights on the earth. So, a human is the only being that has legal rights on the earth, in this world, universe, to function, given by the most high, to dominate. A human is a spirit in a dirt body. The most high's word can never change. You better say it again. The most high word can never change. So here is the mystery. Any spirit without a dirt body is illegal on earth in this world. This is why you don't understand the Bible too well. Oh Lord. Because you are still living with demonic influences. Still functioning from your reasoning human minds. Because if you don't understand this concept, and I just explained it in detail, the Bible will never make sense to you. Concept equals is a truth or supernatural spiritual principle equals rule of action or conduct, general law, or truth revealed by divine revelation. Teach us how to pray. Oh, Lord. Now watch this, including the incarnation of Yeshua HaMashiach. Carnation is from the word Carnal meaning dirt. You better teach this thing. Incarnation means a spirit in a dirt body became a human. Come on, Yeshua. So any spirit without a dirt body is illegal on earth in this world. So now you know why demons or illegal, forbidden by law to function through your body because you have been given supreme authority or keep them out. They are illegitimate, lawless, unauthorized, demonic influences of pride, disobedience, impatience, rebellions, anger, self-pity, rudeness, Doubt, unbelief, worry, anxiety, fear, selfishness, lust. Wanting to upset the most high's authority, etc. Your most powerful weapon that you possess here on earth is not your spirit. The most powerful weapon that you possess on earth in this world is your body when it is purified, holy, righteous. This is why Hasatan and his demonic kingdoms want to inhabit you, to debase and corrupt you because when you are pure, holy, you are very dangerous to them. Listen attentively. This is why when you lose your body, even you become illegal. You have to leave. We call it death. Spirits never die. You will never die. 
It's your physical body that dies. When you lose your physical body, you have to leave. So, the most powerful weapon you have on earth is your physical body sanctified because write this down. Write it down. Y'all got y'all papers in your pen? I already told you we teaching tonight. Write this down. Your physical body keeps you legal here on earth in this world. This is why demons are trying to enter your body. They are trying to become legal. Demons' possession is simply a demonic influences trying to use your body to become legal so they can function here in this world. This is why you can't cast them out because they have no legal authority. But you have to be doing this in the spirit of man. Yeshua HaMashiach, not presumptuously, still full of sin. Otherwise, they will brutalize you. Remember the sons of Sceva who tried to cast out demons? Remember that? Navelle Johnson says, he asked the Lord about that. Lord, what was that? Why? going there he said come I said oh good because I wanted to see what happened then I was standing there watching this scene the disciples were casting out demons and it was fine then they the sons of Sceva said we can do that as I was watching this then came this demon possessed man and they said we can use the name of Yeshua what we can use the name of Jesus. You know how y'all do it. We cast it out in Jesus' name. We bind you in Jesus' name. We're going to use Jesus' name. That's the magic word. Then they started on this man, trying to cast out demons. And I heard his demons talking, saying, this is not right. He is the wrong color. His smell is wrong. We can't see any light of faith. Excuse me. They were talking like this. Those demons were not scared at all. They even seemed amused. Something is not right here. Colors are wrong. Sounds wrong. Smells wrong. Let's beat them up. That's exactly what happened. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13 in the NIV version, put on the full armor. Become total redeemed. Purify ha, in Hamashiach so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Yeshua could stand his ground because he was sinless, pure, holy. And after you have done everything to stay, remain in your holiness. Oh, Lord, remain in your holiness. This day, now, today, that you may be able to withstand because you have a physical body. You can cast out demons. You have the authority. Are you following me? Okay. Write this down. The Most High chose to make himself illegal on earth. Come on in here, Gwen. We talking on National Prayer Day, girl. We're teaching you how to pray. Okay. You following me? Okay, write this down. The Most High chose to make himself illegal on earth. What you say? The Most High chose to make himself illegal on earth. I'm trying to explain prayer to you. So watch how it works. I'm trying to explain prayer to you. So watch how it works. The Most High said, Let them have dominion over the earth. Let who? Them. What did the Most High say? Let them. He did not say let us have dominion. He did not include himself. 
The most high did not have a dirt body. He gave that to us. Then the most high created a law. What you say? Then the most high created a law. The law said, let them have dominion over the earth. When the most high speaks, every word becomes law. And the most high himself will never violate his law. Oh, Lord. If he did, you could never trust him. So the most high need humans in order for him to intervene, interfere in this world. So that he does not break his own law. Therefore, nothing can happen on earth. Without the cooperation and participation of a human. This is how powerful you are. You better come on. This is how powerful you are. The Most High himself cannot interfere, intervene, superimpose on earth in this planet without your license and permission that he gave you. Come on now, pray without ceasing. Men ought to always pray and not faint on National Prayer Day. And I know this sounds so unbelievable. <laughs> and I know this sounds so unbelievable. But if you don't understand this, this is why your prayers are not being answered. Remember now, this teaching is explaining prayer. Do not get confused. Remember now, this teaching is explaining prayer. Do not get confused. Because some of you may be thinking, what about all those other things that the Lord does providerly or by angels? Remember, we are explaining how prayer works and the mystery behind it. Our subject is solely on prayers. What you say? Okay. Our subject is solely on prayers. You've been praying a long time and you still broke. <laughs> what you say? You've been praying a long time and you still broke, still sick. You cannot pay your bills. You've been confessing scriptures and they have not been coming to pass. That's because you are waiting for the most high to do something. He needs your corporation. <laughs> this will make sense in a moment. Stay with me. Come on, stay with me. Yeshua said, I never do anything except what I see my father doing. Except I hear my father's prompting. I want to give you what I call the seven principles of prayer. What you say? Hallelujah. Number one, the legal authority to dominate earth was given to humans. That's a principle. <laughs> Number two, the most high did not include himself in the legal authority structure here on earth. He, oh Lord, said, let them have dominion. So he took himself out of the equation. I hope y'all running with me right now because I'm running. We are his sovereign on earth. That's is not because the most high is weak. It is not because the most high is sovereign or not sovereign. It is because the most high will never break his word. Number three, man became the most high's legal steward of his earthly domain. You are the legal agent on earth. You're legal. You are the legal agent on earth. What is man? A human. A spirit in a dirt body. You better come on, Dr. J. Number four. Only spirits in a physical body are legal on earth. What you say? 
only spirits, oh Lord, in a physical body are legal on earth. I'm trying to stay in this chair, Zenobia. Number five, any spirit without a dirt body is illegal on earth, and that included the Most High Himself. Oh Lord, come on, Holy Ghost. I know it's hard to understand this. What you say? I know it's hard to understand this, but the Most High will not break His word. Number six, any supernatural influence on earth is only legal through a human man or human. Let me ask you a question that you probably never thought of. When he was about to pick the fruit, why didn't the most high stop her? Have you ever thought about these questions? The most high could have saved us a whole lot of trouble and he could have just stopped that woman from picking that stupid fruit. He could have saved the whole human race because he heard the conversation between her and the devil. He was watching the entire thing. He sees everything. The question is, why did he not intervene? Ooh. Oh, Lord, you feel that? Oh, Lord, I feel some divine intervention going on. This is an important question. You mean an almighty, omnipotent, the most high, could not stop a female from picking the fruit. Well, now you know why. Well, now you know why. Because if the Most High had come in and interfered with that operation, he would have violated his word and we could never trust him again. I put my word over my name. Now let's explain the devil for a moment. Come on, Most High God. Now let's explain the devil for a moment. Hasatan, Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, whatever you want to call him, I don't know if it's girl, is a spirit being. So, he is illegal. Huh? So, he is illegal. So what does he do? Oh, Lord. So what does he do? He wants to do business on earth. <laughs> but he needs a body. Ooh, he goes to the serpent. What you say? He needs a body. Ooh. So what does he do? He goes to the serpent. He negotiates with the serpent. The serpent is what? 100% dirt. What you say? The serpent is 100% dirt. So he tells the serpent, loan me your body to hide in. Oh, Lord. For a few moments. So I can be temporarily legal on earth to do business with this woman. What you say? The serpent. The devil said to the serpent, loan me your body for a moment so I can do some temporary business on earth with this woman. And the Bible says, the Lord, the Most High, cursed the serpent because he allowed the devil to enter his body. Make sure you do not fall into this same temptation that will allow woo, the Most High to curse you. Uh-oh. The serpent, the snake, used to walk upright uh -uh, on legs. Did you know that? The serpent, the snake, used to walk upright on legs. Go read your Bible. 
So the Most High cursed him and told him, From now on, you will not walk upright anymore. Because you allow the devil to possess your body illegally. You will crawl in the dust for the rest of your life. And thus, we see them on the ground. My point is, Satan needed a dirt body. What you say? Come on down. My point is, Satan needed a a dirt body. Woo! He does business with this woman through this dirt body and the whole human race was about to fall and the Most High could not get involved. I'm teaching you about prayer and the Most High could not get involved. Not because he was weak. Not because he was not powerful. Not because he is not omnipotent, omnipresent, ominous, all mighty powerful. The most high is the most high. But because he is too faithful to his word. You could say that the fall of man was because of the Most High's faithfulness. I put my word above my name. You can say, because of the Most High's faithfulness. And the devil knew it. Y'all better come on and get this understanding. And the devil knew it. Now remember, Satan used to live with the Most High. He knows him very well. And Satan knows, Lucifer knows that the Most High will never break his word. Will never break his word. Will never break his word. So Satan was glad when the Most High said, let them have dominion. Because he knew. He knew the Most High wouldn't come in and interfere. Y'all get this? He knew something that you don't know. Calling the Most High God, calling the Most High God to do something. And he's saying, I need you to do something. Call me on my word. Because I put my word above my name. And what happened? And what happened? The whole human race collapsed. And we sadly declared independence from the kingdom of heaven and became a colony without a kingdom. Wow. We lost our father and our government. This is what happened to anyone. That falls into sin. The Bible says. Even the Holy Spirit. Had to leave. What you say? The Bible says. Even the Holy Spirit. Had to leave. He could no longer. Strive with men. Ooh. Remember that verse in Genesis chapter 6. Why? Because the Holy Spirit. Is a spirit. He needs a holy body. So he had to leave. Now if you study the Old Testament. And I know y'all don't. Now if you study the Old Testament. Where the Holy Spirit ever lived in a human. Why? Illegal. So when those prophets prophesied. For example. They never possessed the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he would come unto them, prophesy, then he would leave. Why? He could not live in them because the body was contaminated. They had not yet been consecrated. 
He could not stay on earth in their dirt bodies. And here we are in Genesis chapter 3 with the whole thing falling apart. Now the most high cannot come in, but Satan forgot that the most high could still talk. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, and bless your name. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. And bless your name. The Most High in verse 15 of Genesis chapter 3 begins to talk to Satan, not to Adam. He says to the devil in verse 15, and I am going to paraphrase it for you. He said, Satan. That was pretty good. You know I cannot come in. And you are right. Oh Lord! I cannot come in as a spirit because I will break my law. What'd you say, Most High? So the Most High said, Satan, that was pretty good. Because you know I cannot come in as a spirit because I will not break my law. Then he said, and watch this now, I'll make you a promise, devil. He says, I promise you, the same woman you used to mess this up, watch him now. I am going to use that same woman. Oh, no! She is going to give me a body through this supernatural, mysterious move of mine. I am going to come in legally. What'd you say? I am going to come in legally. Then I'm going to crush your head. That was the promise. Now you know why the Most High woo, had to become a man. What'd you say? Now you know why the Most High had to become a man to deliver us from Satan so that he can live and reign in us and with us. Give him a hand. He is a good Most High. Give him a hand. He is a good Most High. Give him a hand. He is a good Most High. Watch him now. Hallelujah and glory to your name. Bless your name, Lord. The entire Old Testament, in my simple view, is simply a complete repetition of the Most High's promise. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. That's all it is. Until he sent Yeshua HaMashiach. And when we get to Isaiah... Isaiah reveals some details. Oh, Lord! Isaiah says, I see him more than just coming. What'd you say, Isaiah? I see him more than just coming. He said, the virgin body shall be with child, and she shall conceive and bring forth a son. And his name, watch this now, his name shall be called, which means in man, which means mankind, El, which is Elohim, the most high inside a man's body. Give the most high a hand. Give the most high a hand. Come on, Tiffany. Come on, Tiffany. I know you feeling this on National Prayer Day. Say, Emmanuel, shout hallelujah. Everybody say, Emmanuel, the most high inside a man's body. Listen attentively. Now the next chapter, 
Isaiah chapter 9 says, For unto you a child will be born, not the son. Now the son is never born. Do not confuse the child with the son. Oh, Lord, what you say? Do not confuse the child with the son. Mary is not the mother of the son. She's, oh, Lord, mother of the child. What you say? Mary is not the mother of the son. Mary is the mother of the child. Oh, Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. The child is the physical body. For unto you a child will be born. The Most High star, the Most High says, but the Son will not be born. I am going to put that Son supernaturally, mysteriously inside the child. The child will be the dirt body, but sacred sinless and pure. The son is Elohim, the most high. So the child will make the son legal here in the world. What you say? Come on, most high God. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Come on. Put your hands together and praise him. And 4,000 years later, it says, in the fullness of time, the most high sent his son, born of a woman. And the angel said to Mary, you shall conceive and you shall bear a son. You are going to call the son, it says. The words of the angel was very pacific, he said. You are going to call the child Yeshua, which means Savior. You are going to name the child. But you are, hallelujah, not going to name the son. He is already named. He is already named. His name is Hamashiach. But the child, the physical body, will be called Yeshua. What you say? But the child, the physical body, will be called Yeshua. Yeshua is the body that is sacred. So Yeshua made Hamashiach legal. What you say? So Yeshua made Hamashiach legal. Yeshua was 100% man. And Hamashiach is 100% the most high. And Satan did not know what to do with that. Come on. Men are to always pray and not faint. This kind comes by fasting and praying. Don't be anxious for nothing. But all things in prayer and supplication. Making your petition known before the Lord. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Our Father who art in heaven. How will thou be thy name? Thou kingdom come. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. The Spirit is all over this thing. The Holy Ghost is leading and guiding us into all truth. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. The Most High came into the human race legally. Say it again, Dr. J. The Most High came into the human race legally. Now he can do business without breaking his own law. Now he can do business without breaking his own law. And this is the whole point of the incarnation. Now I did not come to teach on this, but I just wanted you to understand it. I want you to understand this 
is a point why the Most High could not interfere, intervene when Eve was about to pick the fruit. He was protecting his integrity. This is why the Most High needs you. Your body becomes sacred because you have a body. The Most High needs you to do anything on the earth. Now I don't want to get into any arguments with you. I want you to go and read your Bible all over again by yourself, but with the new understanding and the Bible will change right before your eyes. Your understanding of the scriptures will begin to change. Now you understand why, for example, everything the Most High did, he needed a human. He needed Moses. Come on, Most High God. He needed Abraham. Come on, Most High God. He needed Joshua and Caleb. Come on, Most High God. He needed Naomi me and Ruth. Come on, Most High God. He needed Adam and Eve. Come on, Most High God. He needed the children of Israel. Come on, Most High God. He needed Yeshua. I am the resurrection and life. He needed a human to cooperate with him because the human has the legal authority they have the key hallelujah and bless your name because the human have the legal authority i have given you the keys of the kingdom anything you bind on us shall be bound in heaven anything you loose on us shall be loosed in heaven i need you to pray Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <coughs> Woo! Excuse me. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. You know, when the Most High wanted to judge Sodom and Gomorrah, come on, United States of America, because the Most High God is judging you because you're changing his laws. When the Most High wanted to judge Sodom and Gomorrah, the question is, why couldn't the Most High just judge them? He is the Most High. He is sovereign, the Almighty, the Most High. That's because it was illegal. So he went to a man named Abraham. Come on, Most High God. So he went to a woman named Dr. J and said, Will you stand in the gap and teach the Torah and wake up the 12 tribes of Israel? He had a man named Abraham. He said, Abraham, look, I've got a problem with Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, Dr. J, it's National Day of Prayer, and I got a problem with the United States of America. I want you to judge them. Whew. I want to judge them, but I cannot do it. Because I'll be illegal. So I need you to give me permission to enter your body to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, Lord, hallelujah, and bless your name. When Abraham figured it out. When Abraham figured it out. You gonna get it. You gonna get it. When Abraham figured it out. When Sarah Sankey figured it out. When Tiffany Reynolds figured it out. Woo, come on now. When Dr. J figured it out. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Do you understand? When Abraham figured it out, he said, wait a minute. You need me. What you say? When Abraham figured it out, Abraham said, wait a minute. You need me. To judge the city. 
Abraham said, let's start making the deal. Abraham said, let's start making the deal. I pray that you got this to see your worth walking with the most high and holy partnership prayer, divine corporation. What you say? I hope you got this to see your worth walking with the most high and holy partnership prayer, divine corporation. Come on and give the most high a hand. That's awesome power he has released to us. If you allow him to clean you up, to sanctify you, Abraham said, let's make a deal. If I can find 50 righteous men. Come on, Most High God. The Most High said, I can't touch it. He said, what about 40? The Most High said, you're the boss. He said, what about 30? The Most High said, keep on dealing. Oh, Lord. How about 20? The Most High said, you're the one in charge. Here is the key. The Most High said to Abraham, listen, I got the power, but I gave you the authority. What you say? The Most High said, Abraham, listen, I got the power, but you got the authority. Authority, the power to determine, adjudicate, or otherwise settle issues or disputes, jurisdiction, or right to delegate it, or given authorization. Who has the authority to grant permission? A person or body of persons in whom authority is vested as a governmental agency. Usually authorities, persons having the legal power to make and enforce the law, the government, a statute, a court rule, a judicial decision that establishes a rule or a principle of law, a ruling, commanding influence, the authority given to the child, us. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? I, I, I know it's about to be 9 o'clock at night in Colorado. And on the East Coast, it's 11 o'clock. Are y'all with me? Or y'all want me to just stop this prayer? I'm teaching you how to pray. Say, go on, Dr. J, if you want me to keep on going. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Testimony. Witness command. Dominion. Ascendancy. Overment. Ambassadors. Representative to a foreign country. Agent. Deputy. Diplomat. Emissary, envoy, minister, and ambassador is an important official from the kingdom of the Most High who lives in a foreign country to this world and represents his or her own country. The kingdom of the Most High's interest here, agents, is a person or authorized to act or speak on the most high's behalf. Advocate, ambassador, mediator, broker, minister, servant, power, equals to supply with electricity or other means of power, energy powers, to give power to, make powerful, to inspire, spur, sustain, a strong faith in divine goodness, power, his life, fuel, engine, or any source able to do work, to supply the force, to operate. If someone in authority has the power to do something, they have the legal right to do it. The police 
has the power to arrest. Power is energy, especially electricity that is obtained in large quantities from a few source. Almighty, omnipotent, the most high, almighty or infinite in power as the most high, having very great or unlimited authority or power supreme, unrestricted, complete power over everything. Then Abraham said, if I could find one righteous man in that city, you cannot destroy it, right? I cannot touch it until you give me permission. So Abraham said, I'll be right back. And he went to Sodom and found his nephew Lot. He said to him, Lot, this Let's get out of here because I am about to give the most high permission to demolish this place. Father, I am surrendering my body to you, Lord, for consecration so that you, Lord, can come to live in me. Everybody say power. I've got it only if I die and enter the holiest of all. That's what prayer is. What you say? That's what prayer is. Prayer is man giving the most high permission to interfere in the earth's affair. What you say? That's what prayer is. Prayer is man giving the most high permission to intervene in earth's affair. And when Lot came out, the most high said, Abel, now they are buddies, friends, are catching this. Can I do it now? Abe said, come on, Abraham. Go for it, brother. I'm gone. And the most high went, push. Thank you very much. And he burned the city up. This is Dr. Miles Monroe paraphrasing this whole event to fit our imagination. Dr. Miles Monroe continues. You turn the pages of the Bible. You meet another guy. The Most High says, I have heard the cries of the Egyptians hurting the Israelites. I want to come down to deliver them. Did you get that? The Most High said, I want to come down to deliver here is the most high asking for permission, but I cannot do it because I am a spirit. I need a human to give me permission. I need a human to give me permission because I gave them permission. That was Moses' commission. That is what the most high needed Moses. I need a human to give me permission Remember Moses called up unto the mountain to meet with the Most High for 40 days and 40 nights of fasting and prayer. During which time he was consecrated for this job to be done by the Most High using his sanctified body. This was Moses' commission. That is what the Most High needed Moses for. Dr. Miles Monroe paraphrasing again. So the Most High calls Moses and he says, Moses, look, I want to do something, but I cannot come in. Come on now. I want them to count the Omer. Without your permission, I want to set the Israelites free. Will you do business with me? Oh, if you grasp this, your prayer life will change. If you grasp this, your prayer life will change. Yeshua's body will consume you. The perspective of your praying position will change. The Lord just said, tell them perspective, the truth I have just received regarding praying relations with the Lord. The fact of seeing all this reveling data and this powerful relationship, relative importance. So the Most High calls Moses and says, Moses, look, I want to do something, but I cannot come in without your permission. I want to set the Israelites free. Dr. J, 
and 5780. I want to do something, but I cannot come in to wake up Israel. I need you to wake up the nation, Dr. J. Will you do business with me? <clears throat> oh, Lord. Whoa, well, Lord. Whoa, well, Lord. Whoa, well, Lord. Yes, most I got. Yes, most I got. Yes, most I got. And Moses started arguing. He started telling the most high. I'm from the wrong family. I ain't got the right color of skin. I can't talk. I can't pronounce those Hebrew words. The Most High said to him, Will you just shut your mouth, man? I've got to use somebody. I've got to get any human, just a human, to let me do this. You don't understand your power. Woo, I'm trying to stay in this chair. You don't understand your power, Adrian Gordon. You don't understand your power. Why couldn't the Most High just go in and set them free by himself? Illegal, illegal, illegal. And you wonder why the Most High tolerates you. What you say? And you wonder why the Most High tolerates you. Tell somebody and call them tonight. I got the power. I got the authority. This is why the Most High still works with you with all your foolishness. He still works with you. Why? Because you got a body. And the Most High says, Moses, please quickly agree with me. Then Moses finally says in chapter 4 of Exodus, okay, Lord, let's do it. And the Most High said, okay, thank you very much. Let's go. Now, if you follow the story carefully, that's where we are right now. Now, if you follow the story carefully, key, the Most High did nothing without Moses announcing it, speaking it out, declaring it out first. What you say? Now, and if you notice carefully, the Most High did nothing, hallelujah, without Moses announcing it, speaking it out, and declaring it out first. I pray that you caught this major insight. Oh, Lord, point. Have you ever read how the Red Sea was open? They, the Israelites, were there in the wilderness. Pharaoh's army is coming behind them. The Red Sea in front of them. One million people getting ready to die. Then Moses says, people, do not be afraid. I promise you that before the sun set, every Egyptian you see chasing us will be dead. Key, then Moses ran behind the bush and said to the Most High, did you hear what I told them? This is the key. When we pronounce his acts, when we pronounce he acts, his power accompanies our pronouncement. What you say? When we pronounce he acts, his power accompanied our pronouncement. It's all there in the Bible. It's all there in the Bible. Moses ran after making his desperate pronouncement to the people to give them confidence and to keep them calm. Imagine million people Losing their composure on you in this do or die chaotic situation. Even though he too 
was terribly afraid. He contained his fears. He did not allow them to see his weaknesses. He was so afraid, he switched awareness. Moses switched into his spiritual consciousness. Tell again. Moses switched into his spiritual consciousness. Went inside and said to the Most High, The Most High, did you hear what I told them? The Most High said, Yes. Uh, I heard everything you said. The Most High responds, Now go and do exactly what you said. What you say? National Day of Prayer. Teach them how to pray. The most I said, yes. Wow. <laughs> I heard everything you said. The most high response. Now go ahead and do exactly what you said. Because you are the human authority. And I am the most high. The most high, the almighty power. Oh, Lord. If you say kill them, the wicked Egyptians, I will kill them. Wow. I found that out. Okay. If you say kill them, the wicked Egyptians, I will kill them. So then Moses stands up on a rock. With a piece of wood. Now the most high. Cannot open the water. Without a human's permission. So the most high says. Moses. Lift up your rod. Ooh. Towards the sea. Oh Lord. He said. Now say open. Oh Lord. Moses says. Now, please, observe carefully the instant partnership, cooperation. Moses did not start arguing. Man, what you talking about? How do you expect this gigantic sea to open? He obeyed instantly because he knew from whom the instruction was coming. And he also knew many lives were at stake. Unlike how some of us who would have allowed Satan, the devil, to manipulate our reasoning minds in the heat of that instant to doubt the most high, question his integrity, his sovereignty, which would have brought mayhem down. Then we would also, by the influence of the devil, blame it on the Most High. Then start thanking and allowing the devil to still influence us again. Thinking in our minds. It's no use serving this, the Most High. I am going back to functioning by myself. I cannot handle all of this crazy stress and responsibility unknowingly going straight back into the devil's stronghold captivity where the Lord savaged us from. No boldness in the most high. No victory. Then the most high says, thank you very much. And the most high blows the sea open. The people walk through the sea on dry ground. Read your Bible carefully. It says, when they were all on the other side, the water was still open. Then Pharaoh and his army jumped right in behind, pursuing them, coming to kill them still. And Moses was wondering, why the water isn't closing? And the Most High said, 
said, I can't close it without your permission. <laughs> this is written in the Bible. So, the Bible says, Moses turned around, lift up his rod and said, close. The Most High said, thank you. Pop, everybody dead. Give the Most High a hand clap. He needs you. He needs you. He needs you. Sanctified. Oh. Oh, Lord. So here are the laws of prayer. So here are the laws of prayer. Please write this down. So here are the laws of prayer. Number one, first law of prayer. The legal authority on earth is in the hands of humus man. You got it? He gave it to you. <laughs> what you say? Number one, first law of prayer. The legal authority on earth is in the hands of humus man. You got it? He gave it to you. Number two, the most high will never violate the law of his word. Number two, the most high will never Violate the law of his word. Number three, nothing will and can happen on earth without man's kind cooperation. This is why the most high needs you to pray on National Prayer Day. He needs you to pray so he can keep working in this world. If you stop praying, heaven shuts down. Say it again. If you stop praying, Heaven shuts down. This is why Yeshua bade us, he said. Men ought to always be praying without ceasing. Why? Because if you ever stop, heaven shuts down. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Here is the verse. That you never understood. Y'all hanging with me? Y'all hanging with me? Here is a verse that you never understood. Now you are going to understand it. Wherever any two of you that are sanctified. Watch me now. He says, come together and agree concerning anything on the earth. Then it can be done. By your father, who is in heaven. Oh, Lord. So good. If you stop petitioning the most high, the most high stops working in the world. This is why you should pray without ceasing. Oh, Lord. 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 Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Amen, 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 and amen. Oh, Lord. Most high God said, I'm Dr. J. Ain't nobody told you to stop. I can't get this teaching through without you. So if you stop teaching, they have no understanding. Wow. Okay. Ah, it's like 9.15. I'm outside of time, baby. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. What? What is prayer? Holy communion conversation. Giving the most high permission to interfere in earth's affair. Number four. How you not going to give them all the principles of prayer? You just shut up heaven. I just shoot. Okay. Hands up. Don't shoot. Okay. What is prayer? Holy communion conversation. Giving the most high permission to interfere in earth's affair. Number four. The most high cannot interfere in this world without the corporation of a human, Dr. J. Okay. Number five. Mankind holds the power of license on earth. You better come on, Gina Tate. 
Mankind holds the power of license on earth. You have the authority. The most high got the power, but you've got the authority. Okay, let me share something with you that you probably whoo, did not appreciate. Read John chapter 5 four times. What you say? Read John chapter 5 four times. In that chapter, Yeshua explains this entire scenario. In that chapter, remember that the Pharisees and the scribes came to Yeshua because he had finished working so many miracles. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He cast out demons. He cleansed the lip. He raised the young girl from the dead. You better come on, Dr. J. Who knows? He was just working miracles that whole day. He was working hard. They were so shocked. So they asked him in chapter 5 of the book of John, by what authority? Watch the words. By what authority do you do these miracles? That's what they asked him. What was the word? Authority. Not power. Authority. He answered. Major key. I only do what I see my father do. What you say? I only do what I see my father do. Who is Yeshua? A sacred human with the most high on the inside. What you say? Who is Yeshua? A sacred human being with the most high on the inside. So he's legal. Now watch this. He said, I only do what I see the father do. My father works, so I work. Key. He thinks it. I manifest it. What you say? He thinks it. I manifest it. Now watch him. He said, and you ain't seen nothing yet. He says, because the time is coming soon when you will see the Son of Man in all his glory. Son of Man, very important statement. Yeshua used two terms to describe himself. Son of the most high and son of man. Right. Oh Lord. Two very different terms. Son of the most high means this is the most high inside of me. Son of man means this is the dirt side of me and the dirt side makes the most high side legal. What you say? So, they are asking him, what authority? Come on, Tiffany. Come on, Adrian. Come on, Gina. So, they are asking him, Tiffany, what authority? <laughs> this authority is given to the human side. So, now watch him. He said, it's there in your Bible. It's there in your Bible. Y'all got to read it. Yes. Go read your Bible. It will bless you. He said, the reason why I can do these miracles is not because I am the son of the most high. That's in that chapter. Why? The son of the most high is illegal. He said, I do these miracles because I am the son of man. I have the sacred physical body. I've got the authority to 
shall do them. I have the license, oh Lord, to do them. Give the Most High the praise from the power of your body. If it is laid on the altar of incense, remember. So go study John chapter 5. What makes you dangerous is your body. Tell them again. What makes you dangerous is your body. Your sanctified, sacred body. This is the reason why it's necessary for you to fast and pray 40 days, 7 days, 3 days, 21 days, 14 days. This kind of sacrifice brings consecration. This kind of sacrifice brings consecration. Put your dirt body. Onto the altar of incense for you to be delivered from all of its corruption. It empowers your spirit, gives your spirit authority to assume authority, to rule your body, give you back the ownership of your body. Yeah. Eat fast, eat fast. You are becoming closer and closer to the most high. Most high. Union, intimacy, partnership. And prayers. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Union, intimacy, partnership, and prayers. You are becoming dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. Some of your wonders wonder why the Most High does not want to lose your body. That's because the Most High needs your sanctified body. This is a big one. So listen attentively. Why did the Most High provide healing? The answer for his requiring our sanctification for, <laughs> not for your sake, for himself. He needs a sanctified body to stay and function here in this world. He cannot live in a corrupt body. He can only come upon them to do or say what he needs to and leave. Even the Holy Spirit leaves a corrupt body. Well. Why did the Most High provide healing? Not for your sake, for himself. Why would the Most High bring you back from the dead? Salvation and heal your bones and muscles. Why would the Most High take cancer out of your gut and fix your liver? It ain't for you. This is why many people who get sick don't get healed. Because they want to get healed for themselves. Lift your hands up and say, Lord, heal me for your sake. You need this body, so heal me now. High blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, sinus, whatever cannot take this body. You need this body. I receive your healing now. Give the most high a praise for your healing on National Prayer Day. Now in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. This is why you pray for healing. This is not about you. It's about the Most High. He needs you sanctified. This is why he says you must keep on praying. Because praying with fasting is self-sacrificing. Death to your flesh. You stop praying. You shut heaven down. He said. Whatsoever you bind. Oh Lord. He said. Whatsoever you bind. Constrict. Chain. Hamper. Restrain. Restrict. Tie up on the earth. The heaven. Then heaven can bind it. Whatsoever you loose. Free. Liberate. Release. Unlock. Come on, Most High God. Hallelujah. Unrestrained. Unrestricted. Unshackled. Untied. On the earth. Then heaven can loose it. Somebody give the Most High a big shout on the National Day of 
of prayer. Hallelujah. Go and get back your power. Woo Hallelujah. And bless your name. He had delivered the ultimate message for the end time sons and daughters of the Most High for rehabilitation of El El Yad, the Feast of Tabernacles, where we, the church, have now moved into the last dimension. Then the Lord quickened me to the revelation he gave regarding Yeshua. 40 days of prayer and fasting, how the devil tempted him throughout the magnetist end result. Fasting is self-sacrificing, death to the flesh. Luke chapter 4, verse 1 through 14. When Yeshua went on the fast, he was led by the Holy Spirit to fast. Revelation, you must be led by the Most High or the for the fast is in the flesh. He was led into the wilderness, which is isolation from the world, proving that the world had no power over him. You have to isolate yourself from your friends, things, etc., to hear from the Most High. It is sacrifice. How badly do you want it? How badly? Do you want the most high? You have to remain intimate with the Lord during this time. Every day, he, Yeshua, was on the fast. The devil tempted him. The devil is his own. The devil is our own minds, will, and emotions. And who knows us better than our own mind? At the end of the 40 days, the devil came himself. To tempt Yeshua. He wanted Yeshua to distrust the Father in his sovereignty to place his trust in temporal things. But he could not succeed because Yeshua's body was sacred, pure. This is why the Most High is insisting you must be sanctified. He needs our sanctified bodies. When the fasting and temptation had come to an end for this season period of 40 days and night, Yeshua returned to Galilee full of power to begin his mission. You are in. Woo! You are ended with the power from the most high to accomplish your mission after you have fasted and prayed. Pay the price. Prove it. Your sonship. You are important to the most high. Give him a praise for making you so important. Come clap your hands and shout to the most high. You are his secret weapon. You are his battle act. You are his authority on earth. You are the most high's secret weapon. Pray, oh Lord, have mercy. I'm about to explode here. Somebody explode with me. Give him praise. Give him glory. Come start being proud. Lift your hands and praise him. Pray without ceasing. Pray all kinds of prayers and supplication. Pray. He needs you to pray. You will live long because of the revelation of this message. You will live long because of the revelation of this message. Your disease will go away. Now, because of this message, you are going to overcome cancer. You are going to overcome diabetes, high blood pressure, all etc. Because he needs your body. Father, silence all lusts, vanities, pride, selfishness, and take those wickedness out of your children's heart plus the lustful desires of their dirt bodies out 
from their hearts, Father, so that you can come into your manifest presence. You are going to live and not die. When you grasp this message, then you will lay down your body on the altar incense so that you can be totally crucified in this fast to go through the door. Yeshua, come on, Yeshua! Yes, yes. Sacred body! into the spiritual manifest presence of your heavenly father. This is what 40 days of fasting and prayer and isolation, if possible, will accomplish for you. He's about to change your household. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, not the demons. I feel some miracles going on right now. Just receive your healing. Prostate cancer, get out. Breast cancer, get out. He healed you for his own sake because he needs your body. Lift your hands and thank him for your healing. You from the crown of your head woo, to the soles of your feet. Come on, just thank him. Whatever disease you had and was unaware of, he has taken away from you because you understand this revelation. He needs your body. Start praying. Allow your spirit to pray and rejoice in the most high, your savior, for that is worthy, is moving among you, doing great things now in his holy name. Give him praise. Lift up your head. Glorify the most high who made you his secret weapon. Now you know why he needs you. Keep on praying. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua. Oh, glory to your name. Preserve me for yourself, Father. The presence of the Most High here working on so much now. I want to close now. Yeshua, Hamashiach, legal. And he walked the earth for 33 years. In six months, he was legal. The Most High was legal because he had a sacred body. But he knew that he had to give that body up. Hamashiach knew that he would have to release Yeshua. So Yeshua took Hamashiach to the cross. And Yeshua died, not Hamashiach. And before Yeshua died, he had a talk with Hamashiach. He said to Hamashiach, don't forsake me. You promise that if I lay myself down, You are going to come back to get me. And I hear Hamashiach telling Yeshua, I'll be back in three days to get you. Why? Because even though I am going to die, my work is not finished. And I still need you to keep me legal. Because I have to come back to create the church. The Bible says, and Yeshua died, not Hamashiach. Hamashiach left the body of Yeshua. He went down into Hades, went down to Giha. He went down into Shiloh. He went down into the depths of hell. He walked up to the devil. He said, he grabbed him by his belt and he yanked the three keys hanging on his belt. Death, hell, and the grave. He told the devil, I'll be back for you later. So I encourage you to stop worrying, doubting, arguing with the Most High, questioning the Most High. Brace yourself. Pay the price. Allow the Most High to lead you through some hard stuff. But you must be holding on to the Most High's word. His promise to you in that situation. Come on, Most High! Because first the suffering, then the glory. You have to be sanctified, delivered from all your weaknesses. What you say? You have to be sanctified, delivered from all your weaknesses. Quit 
to give up running to men or to the ways of this world to solve your problems or to find solutions, which is you running into the clutches of the evil. And eventually, the very same, the most high you were running from after you have paid the consequences of your bad behavior. You're only loving the most high's will come back save you from yourself your rash ooh, devilish influence that came upon you through your arrogance or fears or the most high sending his sacred servant to pour you out from drowning what you say you must determined to go through hard places with your heavenly father to know the value of the most high and to experience his salvation powers which he has given you as well as to get to know him personally life is not easy with the most high personally life is not easy with the most high or with the devil but i'd rather go through hardship with the most high that gives liberation restoration and victories at the end then to lure and deceive by the devil into a perpetual increasing darkness the lord knows the way that i take and when he has tried me he will bring me out as pure gold what you say remember this scripture he promised to those that dare to believe him put their trust in his sovereignty over everything <laughs> Excuse me. He has even challenged us in the scripture saying, put me to the test. Our most high is the most high almighty. Remember, nothing is impossible for him. I pray for you that you learn to wait in his glorious presence to experience his awesome love for you and his power. Rest. He says in me, enter into my rest. What you say, Moses? Oh, Lord, bless your name, Lord. After you have done all that I have instructed you to do, stand. This victory depends on me. My promise to you, I will bring it to pass. Thank you, wonderful Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you, gracious Lord. Keep us steadfast in you always, my Lord. Amen, 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 and amen. Glory to your name. On National Prayer Day, teach us how to pray. Woo! Hallelujah! Come on. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah!
Ooh, glory to his name. <clears throat> you can't say you ain't never been taught how to pray. I mean the right instructions. And the Torah is teachings and instructions in the Most High God on National Prayer Day. Sat down and taught us for almost three hours on how to pray. Y'all, please share this video. Bless you, Tiffany. Bless you, Mother. Bless you, Gina. Oh, Lord, who else out there? Zenobia, bless you for the ones that hung in there. Bless you. I know it was a lot, but it wasn't because we need to have understanding. Now I know how to pray. <clears throat> the most high been waiting on you. And y'all been saying, Lord, do something. Do something. He said, tell me what to do. If you don't give me nothing to work with, I can't do nothing. Give me something. Wow. I am truly blown away on this evening on the National Day of Prayer. Whew. So get to the blog spot, get to Facebook, get to YouTube. It will encourage you. Please pray for me. <laughs> if you are in the tour, please pray for me. Hallelujah. I love you, love you, love you. Ooh, I love you. I love you so much. Bye now. So good. So, so good.